Hey guys, so I've got another two additions to the to the plant family. Um, these are actually the first, well, first trees um, that I've bought for a quite a long time. Um, I think this year most mostly has been about um, Bailey. Even alone. Um, yeah, it's mostly been about clearing stuff out this year because I ended up with so many trees and I couldn't take care of them really. Um, or even if I could, they just didn't have enough space to really do much. Uh, but as I said in a few videos ago, I've been given a half plot allotment now, so I've got a bit more space. So I bought some more apple trees, which are going to be, hopefully, fingers crossed, trained into a spalier. So basically you, you have a kind of, you have posts and then some wires that run along and you grow the trees horizontally um, along the posts and it can kind of keep them fairly compact. Um, so yeah, I'm quite excited. So the two varieties that I've actually wanted for quite a while. Um, the first one is called Blurriness. <laughs> the first one's called Sunset. So you can see it's actually quite a late one, um, but it's meant to be quite similar to Cox Orange Pippin, but a lot easier to grow and quite disease resistant. Um, and the other variety, which to be honest was similar, um, it's called Kids Orange Red, which again is meant to have a similar taste to Cox Orange Pippin, but is meant to be slightly easier to grow again. Um, now, usually if what you do for espaliers is you'd either buy the plant like really, really young and then train it, or you would buy them in basically like already pre-trained into the right shape. Um, the reason I haven't done that, for, I didn't buy them extremely young because then it would take like quite a few years to really get them going. And I want them to be like a little bit of a barrier. It's gonna be like on the border between the, the footpath and my plot. So it's just gonna give me like a little bit of privacy. Um, and the reason I didn't buy them already pre-trained is because firstly, they're pre-trained at like certain heights and I haven't really, I don't know what the fence is gonna look like when, once I build it. So, um, and secondly, pre-trained trees are usually quite a lot more money. So I didn't buy them pre-trained, but luckily, especially for this one, you can see the branches are pretty malleable, so I can grow them horizontally. Uh, this one's going to be a bit more tricky, but I'm sure with a bit of pruning and stuff, and yeah, I can get it going. Um, and I might even get a couple of fruits next year, um, if I'm lucky. So yeah, quite excited about those. Um, and they look pretty healthy trees. Um, although the kids orange red, it does say, where is it? Something about needing regular spraying. Um, which I'm not particularly a fan of. Hello, Misty. But um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Maybe if I really enrich the soil, um, it will be a little bit more resistant to like apple scab and things like that. But also I don't mind if, if some of the fruits aren't, you know, up to scratch. Um, Cause it's only going to be on my allotment. It's not like I'm living off of it or trying to sell them or something like that. So um, yeah, so we'll see how it all goes. So two new varieties there, Kids Orange Red and Sunset. Quite excited to see, yeah what they give me next year and if I can train them into an espalier form. So it's a learning curve for me as well because I've never done it before. And actually I'll just show you quickly if I haven't already said in one of my videos. But yeah, I found these stakes, these really long wooden stakes. They're five foot, I think, just under. Um, these are gonna be the like the fence posts and then I'm gonna string wire, metal wire between them, tighten that up um, and yeah make a little espalier. The reason I got them like, you can see they're quite rustic looking. It's just because everywhere I was looking, 
sorry my alarm went off and can't and stop the video um yeah everywhere where i was looking for like wooden stakes or fence posts and that it's always pressure treated wood and it's really not good for the environment it can't even be recycled pressure treated wood it just goes into landfill which for me is kind of a shame especially if you're using wood you'd think it's like a, a renewable recyclable material but they pressure treat it with like heavy metals and things like that and yeah it's just not good um, especially if you're growing edibles because that stuff leaches into the soil um, so I found these rustic ones at a garden center and yeah I thought I could I'm going to treat them with linseed oil which is a kind of well it's it's a natural uh like preservative is probably not as, as great as you know treating it with something you might find in, in the shop but um at least i know it's safe so yeah that's the plan um it's it's a bit of a learning curve so quite excited to see how it all goes but um yeah thanks for watching guys lots of peace and lots of love and i'll speak to you soon